They are saying an end to Israel. Guess how they're celebrating the 104th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration? That's what happened. Jewish rights slowly begin to close off until they had absolutely no rights at all. This is the Israel Guys. Welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of fake news, you ought to connect to the true and authentic stories of Israel. Josh, this week is the 104th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration. And by the way, the Palestinians yeah. don't just want to see occupation, as they call it, ended. They want to see Israel wiped off the map. Did you also mm. know Palestinians, Jordanians, and Arab foreigners can buy land in Judea, but Jews can't? Hmm. And in case you're wondering, someone that commits terror here in Judea and Samaria has a really good chance of running in a local election and getting elected. That's towards the end of the show, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure to hit all the notifications. And we had so many comments last week, you guys went off like crazy. <laughs> Keep it up. We like that, okay? Luke, we got we to get right into this, this uh, anniversary. We love anniversaries around here. 104 years since the Balfour. That's incredible to us. But what we're going to talk about is the kind of the... Uh, the other side. You know, I think everybody knows Hamas is a terrorist organization, Yeah, right? A lot of people know that Hamas's charter actually calls for the destruction of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody know. like, you go Hamas, worst group, right? You know, or, you know bad dudes. Terrorists. Bad Killers, dudes. yeah. And then people think Palestinian Authority or Fatah, uh, not so bad, right? Not, well, yeah. guess what? Yes, they are just as bad. Mm. And more and more documentation and statements are coming out in recent years. But this week, guess how they're celebrating the 104th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration? Not like most of the Western world. Most of the Western world considers that a really great moment. Right. Where, like, uh, democratic values, because, uh, I mean, come on, this is not the actually founding of the state of Israel. This is not 1948. This is 1917, and way this before. Is, this yeah. is like the founding, like, like, like the, the very beginning building. of how That's right. Israel got launched as a modern country. So, but yeah, Luke, let's just establish this. They are downing the fact of the even the beginning of the light at the, at the, the beginning of the tunnel, of the right. foundations of the beginning of Israel. They're already, this is where they're fighting and, and, uh, Downing and so moment. you guys don't know this is just me talking or Josh's opinion. I'm going to read you their own words. Are you ready? <laughs> the PA official daily on October 28th, four days or three or five days before the anniversary, quote, today after 104 years, the world is still incapable of correcting this historical mistake and this severe injustice by putting an end to the colonialist Zionist project. After 104 years, the conflict is still continuing, and it will not stop until this promise and its consequences are canceled. Okay, big, big note. I just want to point out the fact. Yeah. Quote, putting an end to the Zionist project. <laughs> yeah, what's that? Okay, there's, there's, there's two different things, okay? La, uh, Palestinians talk about the Israeli occupation in the West Bank, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then they talk about Zionism or Zionists or Israel as a whole country. They're not talking about putting an end to the occupation in their minds in the falsely called West Bank. They said putting an end to the colonialist Zionist project. They are saying an end to Israel and an end to the Jews. Okay, that's not all. It gets worse. Yeah. The Facebook page of the Fatah movement, Nablus Branch, just down the hill from here, mm -hmm. uh, November 1st, one day before the anniversary of Balfour, says... Quote, the Balfour promise will remain a living headline for our tragedy that will not end, except with the end of the occupation state, the racist apartheid state. Exactly the same, except much, much worse, because twice the actual, um, you have the PA Daily, which is like their official right. newspaper, right? And then you have the actual Fatah page. Who, who is Fatah? That's the Palestinian Authority, because the Palestinian Authority is ruled by Fatah, the Fatah movement, which is like Hamas, except like Hamas is like on a scale of 10 bad, and then Fatah is like 9.9. .9 they're still terrorists. Yes. Come on, they're still okay, actually and they're inciting both calling, their and they're, people to kill Jews. And they're both calling for the end to Israel, end of their existence. No, look what I think the, uh, the cherry on top of all their celebrations, uh, are, uh, sorry, they're... Uh, they're downing of this 104th anniversary. Uh, Mahmoud Abbas actually 
all over the world called for Arabs, what? To actually lower their flags. No, for Palestinian mass, like staff, institutions, yeah. official government institutions here and all over the world. When That's you, outrageous. When do you fly your flag at half mast? When somebody dies, when somebody or like, dies, what? Like, maybe a, a tragedy. But yeah. I guess in their minds, this is a tragedy because that's what they call. Well, it. come on, look at it. later on. We know that in 1948, they call that the Nakba, right? So that's right. the the tragedy. I mean, they literally use the word, right? Yeah, but there. I mean, okay. In quick explanation, in case you don't know what Balfour is, just real quick, yeah. it was the Balfour Declaration was on November 2nd, 1917. Yeah. And it was a letter from British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour to Baron Rothschild stating that, quote, His Majesty's government views with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. And you could say that this was basically the precursor to the British mandate, which ended up leading to the establishment of the state of Israel. And uh, just to sum it all up, I'm going to read a direct quote from Palestinian Media Watch because they just said it perfectly. They said, quote, unsurprisingly, the PA never mentions that prior to 1917, much of the Middle East and other regions were part of the Ottoman Turkish Empire for 400 years. They never mention that an independent state of Palestine never existed. They similarly do not mention that the Balfour Declaration was not merely a British whim, but rather a decision adopted and ratified by the international community at the San Remo Conference in 1920. Right. The PA also never mentions that the declaration was also adopted by the League of Nations in 1922, right. the mandate for Palestine. And at that time, Palestine included both Israel, including Judea and Samaria, right. and Jordan. Okay, So Balfour Declaration led to official recognition, recognition by the international community in 1920, which led to the official mandate in 1922 by the League of Nations, which led to... 1948, when Israel was established as a country. Uh, Luke, here at the Israel Guys, we're telling you what, there's no reason to lower flags on uh, this day. And if you didn't celebrate, if you didn't know about it, if you didn't uh, realize that this was a day to celebrate, boys, gals, this was a time to celebrate. And if you didn't raise something, uh, go ahead. If you, Now you know about it. Yeah. Go ahead and just gl- grab a glass of wine and toast your Raise your, your Israeli flag. Uh, raise yeah. an Israeli flag up in your yard. And let's remember the foundations, the Zionist dream, the beginnings of that, begin to take place just 104 years ago. Uh, and though... The world and its anti-Israel regimes, uh, Nazi-like regimes. Right. Can I? Can we just say that? Like, this is an un- unpresent. Like, okay, if the Nazis did that kind of stuff back then, okay, most people don't don't like the Nazis. Like, most people say that was bad. The same spirit, the same anti-Jewish rhetoric, the same kind of talk is going on now, and that's got to be stopped. I was going to say, if you don't believe it, just look in the comment section of our YouTube <laughs> channel. Um, Go ahead, got and check a it couple out. of. <laughs> Good trolls on there, and um, Adolf Hitler himself, uh, right? Yeah, right that's there, what, yeah, yeah. quoting so, yeah, right there. Like you said, the anybody spirit, that has the, the nerve spirit to put of that Nazism name. still living on, still right. living and fighting, and that's furiously. all the credit you get, Hitler. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah, okay, uh, moving fighting on. Fighting furiously, and I'm telling you what, there's more than that's just fighting this furiously. Uh, there's everything you can imagine yeah. fighting this furiously. Luke, we're going to talk about now Jews. This it's outrageous when you said this a million times on the show. It's outrageous to me that a Jew cannot buy land. Personally, you can't just go and buy land in Judea. Of all places in the world, a Jew should be able to go buy land in Judea. A Jew can buy land anywhere he wants in America. How about that? A Jew can buy land anywhere he wants, basically anywhere in the world, except where? Arab countries. Okay. Talk about racism. Yeah. Okay. You can't buy, Jews are not allowed to buy land in Arab countries, uh, at least for the most, I don't most know of any, yeah. most part. Yeah. Uh, but, Narrow it down. Jews are not allowed to buy land inside of their own nation, Israel, from Arabs. Okay, what in the world is this going on? And the reason why we're talking about it now is because it came up to vote again, uh, because this has been established for quite some time now, 1971, that was uh, taken on. And what law was this before? Like, Israel actually adopted a Jordanian law that said Jews can't buy land, okay? There's a lot of Jordanian. There is Way actually crazy. a lot of Jordanian laws and Turkish laws that, that actually are in still place. in effect totally. in Judea and Samaria. Right, exactly. Uh, so this Jordanian law says the Jews are not allowed to buy land here, okay? Uh, Israel won the war in 1967, right? Let's get that straight. Israel actually won the war. Okay, so that should change the facts on the ground after that. But no, a lot of these anti-Israel, anti, uh, let's just say they're anti-Semitic, hmm. pure, pure, blatantly anti-Semitic, Jew-hating laws that are actually still in place today under Israel's military law here, which is outrageous to me. An Arab. Okay, so who can buy land here? Um, Jordanians can buy yeah. land in Judea. Okay, this is, remember, Israel uh, is in charge here. 
Israel is in charge. Yet the Jordanian Jews can't buy land, but Jordanians can buy land. Um, Palestinian, so PA Arabs, can buy mm-hmm. land freely, however, whoever they want. They can buy land uh, anywhere inside this zone, uh, inside the Judea and Samaria area. Um, they also, who else can buy land? Anybody that's Arab. Even if you're from another country. Yeah, anybody, anybody. Um, so when we talk about, this is what I want to bring up, because the world <clears throat> is talking about um, the Jews and how awful this state is. You just quoted some things right. about the, uh, the racist apartheid state of Israel. Backwards. Completely yeah. 100% backwards. The racist apartheid state of Israel where, okay, flip it on its head. Where Jews can't buy land or well, just, Arabs let's, can't let's buy be land. Clear. Let's get this straight. Let's Who can't buy land? Can we be clear? Jews in Judea. Yeah, yeah. yeah they can't, yeah. They can't Where buy land. Where does the term Judea. Jew yeah. come from? Okay, in the Bible, Judeans, those yeah. were the Jews of the Bible because they came from Judea. And today, the only people who can't buy land in Judea is the Jews. Right. Uh, that'd be like telling me, Luke, that I can't buy land in America. Like, Americans can't yeah. buy land in America. That's how bad that is. And yet the world, I'm telling you, the world at whole, like, is actually the reason. Okay, let's boil this down. Why did the defense minister not pass this law? Because he because he agrees with the Jordanians? Absolutely not. Oh, because... The defense minister yes. absolutely does not agree with this Unfortunately, we, we have some pretty good people in Israel's government. We also have some people that are very interested in pleasing the international community I, as much as possible. That. That's only it. That's and uh, Israel's defense minister is one of those people that wants to please the international community, make a good name for himself. So he's actually he actually blocked... The, the, blocked you know, Jewish rights to buy exactly. land here. In, in Judea and Samaria. Okay, why would he do that? There's only one answer. We just hinted towards it, but it's international pressure. It's fearing international criticism. Israel fears the international community, and I'm telling you why. It's pretty evident. If you listen to last week's show, yeah. it's pretty evident why they would fear the international community. Come on. The same guy, the defense minister of Israel, just last week set out there and sanctioned six organizations that were clearly, let's not just say it, clearly, connected to terrorist groups, oh, yeah. uh, and the world is bashing Israel for that's that. So that's tire another story that's as well. Ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, but now, obviously, Israel now, what? Are they going to actually go out on their own and say that change a law that's been set for centuries? Jews have not been able to like mm-hmm. be here and, and, and live normally in this Judean Samaria region thousands of years. What? The Turkish Empire was 400 years. Right. Uh, you know, before that, it just keeps going back. The Romans ended the Jewish history here with, with 2,000 years ago. Right. Ju- literally, Jews have not been able to actually live and buy and like normal life here in Judea and Samaria like a, like a Jew should have in his own homeland. How about that? Mm-hmm. T- it's got to change. It's got to change. And the defense minister, for once, needs to understand that there's people out there like Josh, you and I that actually support <clears throat> Israel and their rights to settle mm-hmm. the land of Israel. All of it. Josh, this boils down to two things, I think. One, you can say Israel should have the courage to not block Jewish rights to land development, right, in Judea and Samaria. Yeah. Agreed, 100%. That's totally true. Israel's government should be strong on this issue. Should international pressure, all, or should the international community also support Jewish rights to build and settle and buy in Judea? Yes, okay? So the responsibility goes both ways. And that means it starts as an individual. We're talking to you, watching and listening, and then it starts in your community, it starts on your local politicians level, and then it goes up all the way to your government, whatever country you're in, on how they support Israel. Because it should go both ways. Israel should stand on their own. And yes, they should not have to face pleasing the international community by restricting Jews from buying land in Judea. Look, it just so brings back uh, the atrocities of the past. What, Jews, Jews have historically been in areas where they've been Cut off rights, rights not to buy land. I mean, that happened in the, what in in Germany and all over the world, like these yeah. issues, the pogroms and the, the, hol- like the Holocaust, all these sort of things. That's what happened. Jewish rights slowly began closed off until they had absolutely no rights at all. That's exactly the same story. The international community is trying to close that right. Those rights are flowing to close it off, yep. close it completely off, and then lie out bold faced lie to the rest of the world that Israel is some sort of apartheid nation. Absolutely, 100% false. If there's any apartheid that's to be concluded here, well, it's actually Arab against Jew. Exactly. Arabs saying Jews cannot buy land. Not happening the other way around. Luke, we got to move on. Josh, uh, you know, you could argue that there's a lot of benefits to 
terror, like you could commit terrorism and then reap a lot of benefits from it. Money. Like a lot of it has to do with Fame. money, jobs, um, social security benefits, you know, uh, health insurance, those types of things. How about a social restart? Getting a degree like if you did in an bad, Israeli you could, prison. You yeah. could get like a restart. But I want to talk about another benefit. Yeah. Okay. Let's say your cousin from a local Palestinian town goes out and shoots Jews at a, a bus stop. Kill, kills out? one of them. No, this actually And happened. then uh, you help him get away. Yeah. Eventually he gets caught. Yeah. But then you also get caught for helping him escape. And you get thrown in an Israeli prison. Well, yeah. guess what? That actually not only helps your chances of winning the mayor's election in your local town, but it actually helps you defeat the 13 other candidates so that you become mayor even though you're sitting in an Israeli prison. And no, I didn't make up any part of that story whatsoever. 100%. You remember the guy, Muntasir Shalabi? We actually went out and um, went to the spot. We saw the bullet holes. We tracked his escape route. Went into the town. Um, went into the same towns. And he, uh, tragically, Yehuda Guetta, a local um, Jewish yeshiva student, was killed. And another, another man was wounded, or two others were wounded as well. Um, well, his relative, Abu Rifat Shalabi, is actually in prison right now for helping him, yeah. allegedly helping him escape. And Tura Messiah, a town that we've uh, made some good buddies in and spent some time in, actually interviewed the mayor in his office on one of our, uh, actually our most viral video ever, go, go look it up. Um, they held new elections for the mayor, and out of the 14 candidates, the guy that is in Israeli prisons, uh, or Israeli prison for helping his, his relative escape from the IDF for killing a Jew, won. Why did he win? Well, let's read the quotes from the um, local town leaders who said that Abu Rifat is, quote, a hero who fights for the homeland. Um, another of the town's senior leadership said that the vote for Shalabi was a, quote, message to the occupation and that they view the war, the, quote, war on Palestine as more important than personal gains in favor of clans and tribes. So guess what? This other Shalabi, who's sitting in prison, is going to serve as honorary head of the town until his release, and another guy will fill the position in the meantime. Outrageous. So not only are, do we have pay for slay, we have uh, governments all over the world paying terrorists who are sitting in Israeli prisons. So many benefits. You get out, you're guaranteed a job in the Palestinian Authority government, but you can be in prison and be elected to be the mayor of your local town because everybody views you as a hero. That's what's happening right now. Guys, you can check out all of our source links where we get all of our information in the description below. If you think that a Palestinian who is in jail for acts of terror should not be the mayor of his local town, let us know in the comments below. In the meantime, tune out the fake news and tune in to what is actually happening right here in the land of Israel. We'll be back next week here at the Israel Guys. Hi right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Two quick things before you go. One, smash that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any more of our content. Secondly, if you wanna help us produce more stories and authentic truth straight from Israel's heartland, you can do so at patreon.com slash theisraelguys or at our very own website. It's theisraelguys.com. Both links are in the description below.